From Starfire to Firestarter, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. And joining us on this episode, we have Jordan Dahl. Hello. Hello. We have Nick Marini. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> and we have Liam Sr. Hello, lo, lo. Hello, lo, lo to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on to this episode, uh, returning uh, Jordan and Nick and for the first time, Liam. Very happy to have you here. The rules are very simple. This is a, uh, I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements, but the things you know and love. It's up to you to find the thing that I said that it was wrong. Buzz in and correct me. All your corrections have to be preceded by the phrase, um, actually. And you can interrupt me whenever you want in the question. Yeah, how are y'all feeling? Good. I've I've been practicing. Okay. I, uh, Just correcting people on the street. I've gotten, <laughs> I've gotten very I've gotten very good at losing this game over the past couple of times <laughs> I've been on. Is that true? I feel like you. For some reason, I have a memory of you doing quite well, but I. I don't know. You know what? It's just my uh, energy. Um, actually, apparently we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a fact checker. Great. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started then if you Let's all feel it. ready. Buzzers in hand. Um, actually, is at the tip of your tongue. Um, we will start the question about Stranger Things. When we first meet Mike and his friends in Stranger Things, they're playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons, battling a demon known as Demogorgon. They give this same name, Demogorgon, to the monster from the Upside Down because it bears a striking resemblance to the fantasy demon. Similarly, in season two, a creature is called the Mind Flayer because it also looks like a D&D creature of the same name. I'm uh, um, actually, a Mind Flayer doesn't look like the Mind Flayer in Stranger Things. That was more of like a weird kind of Cthulhu-y mass where I believe a Mind Flayer is more humanoid. They're actually, the, the, they do a kind of kind of similar, those two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick? Uh, I, don't, I don't think... I'm um, actually. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what a demigorgon looks like, but uh -huh. I don't think the demigorgons look the same. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a demigorgon from D and D is typically depicted as a giant lizard-like humanoid with two mandrill heads mounted on a on snake-like necks with tentacles for arms, uh, which is a nightmare and also markedly different yeah. from uh, from the demigorgon in Stranger Things. Which is just Things. a dude with like a flower of teeth for a head, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. Kind of pretty more more humanoid. Um, certainly not uh, two mandrill heads on snake necks yeah. and uh, and things Thank like goodness. that. Get it together, Duffer Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I would watch that show. As well, the, the, yeah, the show with like the, yeah. this like stranger <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that. That's a point for Nick. Our next question is a video game question here. For Lakitu, he appears in so many Mario games, but never gets to have any fun. He's an enemy in a variety of Mario games, and he also shows up in Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Mario Party, and Mario Golf, but only to retrieve balls, communicate information, and referee the games. Um, yeah. actually, I believe recently he was finally allowed to get behind the wheel of a cart. That is correct. How recently? Ah. Uh, I want to say the latest uh, one, for the remake for the Switch. Uh, yes, that's Mario right. Mario Kart in, in, 8? In Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 7, uh, Lakito is a playable uh, cart. Um, actually, doesn't that mean he also gets to have fun? Yeah, that's exactly it. He's finally, he finally gets his shot to have fun. Yeah, he, it is in those two where he's, he is uh, also doing fun things. <laughs> they finally gave him his shot. Yeah, um, good for him. Um, actually, those things aren't fun because Lakitu <laughs> is lame and nobody cares. Get uh, my ball, Lakitu. <laughs> I know I'm going the wrong way. You don't need to hold the sign in front I, of me. I wish to continue having fun, fun with my real friends. <laughs> Why are you here? Mom said you had to invite me. <laughs> It feels like it raises a, an issue if Lakitu is both like refereeing the match and also racing in yeah, the right. match, right? Because like <laughs> when you're racing as him, isn't there still like a Lakitu who's sort of like it's like okay, like here come the lights, like everything's cool. The version that's racing just has like a mustache on. <laughs> yeah, it's like no. no, oh, it's just me. It's someone, someone else. No, nothing to worry about here. I'm a different guy. Oh, the winner is Lakitu again. What a <laughs> shocker! Um, well, that is a point for Liam. Randall Flagg is a recurring villain across multiple novels by Stephen King, often appearing under a pseudonym with the initials RF. He's gone by Robert Frank, Richard Feynman, Ramsey Forrest, Robert Fremont, and Raymond Fiegler, among others. He first appeared in The Stand, but is perhaps best known for being one of the primary antagonists of the Dark Tower series. Yes, Jordan. Um, actually, he first appeared in The Gunslinger? Um, he actually does first appear in The Stand. Rats. Yeah. I'm um, actually one of those many names you said was not one of his names. You're gonna have to be more specific. <laughs> Some of those names, want to take a stab? Is it take a one of them Raymond something? <laughs> <laughs> it's Raymond from Everybody Loves Raymond. Jordan. Um, actually, he's never been the the, the Ramsey Forest. He has been Ramsey Forest. I 
Kidding. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> got, well, you got me. Uh, um, actually, he's never been Raymond Fiegler? Uh, no. Um, actually, he spells Raymond Fiegler with a PH. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the yeah, RP. You couldn't tell how I was saying it, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but that's actually it. All right, I'm going to call it. We just yeah, no one got it. We'll just end up guessing here. <laughs> um, uh, Richard Feynman is a famous physicist uh, <laughs> who is a, a sort of cohort of Carl Sagan's, uh, written a bunch of books and all kinds of things. He is not, in fact, the man in black, uh, a, a great unknowable evil. He is um, a, a physicist, uh, and so that is not one of his. Oh, man, uh, that was like double deep nerd. Yeah, double deep nerd. We're dumb. not. Nerdy it, that was that was either you you either know Stephen King or you know physics. Uh, well, either yeah. one will, will give you a save there. Well, uh, no points for that one. Our next question is a fan submitted question. So one Ooh. of one of the viewers of this program Yo. wrote in a question, and this is about Warhammer Forty Thousand. Orcs in Warhammer Forty Thousand only bear a passing resemblance to those in Tolkien's work. Greenskins, as they're often called, are brilliant engineers capable of spaceflight who worship their own gods Gork and Mork. They also reproduce asexually through spores similar to a fungus. Um, actually, they're not engineers in the sense that they're creating their own technology. They're more like scrap engineers. So they're like taking existing things, strapping those things together, and they're using other people's technology to, you know, transmit themselves to the stars in their wogs. You're pretty close. I'm gonna say that that's close enough to, to what we're going for here, uh, which is that you know orcs are capable of spaceflight, but it's not because of their because they're brilliant engineers. Uh, it's because they manifest a collective psychic field known as WOG, uh, which allows them to will technology to work uh, through just a sort of sheer force of will, uh, not because they're they're particularly like clever engineers and know how machines actually work. They just believe it hard enough, and so it does work. It's the psychic equivalent of hitting the VCR. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> just smacking it. Or like, I guess they kind of secret. They use the secret to sort of make <laughs> their make their machines work. I'm just like, guys, you know what? I really think this this spaceship's gonna get us where we need to yeah. go. Well, there also just need, need to be enough of them, I think. Yeah. <laughs> as like, if there's a small colony, they ain't getting anywhere. But as, once they've reproduced enough, they're like, okay, sick. Cool. Enough of us. We can. <laughs> Let's go, guys. <laughs> And this is our first shiny question of the game. This is called Crunch Time. Here are time travel maps. It is up to you to identify what the property is based on the time and dates traveled to. None of these are from movies. Uh, let's flip this over and let's take a look at this. What on earth do we have here? Is everybody ready? Well, I'm ready. Let's see. Okay, let's here see we it. go. My one guess is Outlander. All right. For the first one. I didn't guess it there. Because my people know it, Outlander. <laughs> All right. It's uh, the one hot Scottish man in fiction. <laughs> what about Fat Bastard? Oh, come on now. <laughs> He's not fictional. <laughs> uh, all right, Nick, why don't you uh, show yeah. us what we got here? This is going to be rough. Okay. I just knew Outlander was a thing that included time travel. So... I put it somewhere. And then that should say a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Okay. Because that's the only other thing I can remember that had time travel. That's very good. And right. not that good King Arthur's Court existed. But you could but travel in there. But yeah, I don't know. All right, Liam, let's see what you got. All right. Uh, so I started with George Washington's Secret Cooler biography. Okay. Uh, this is Boyhood the book, but okay. I'm pretty sure it lasts more than 10 years. <laughs> uh, I read Time Bandits the book, just because okay. I like the movie. I realized that I guessed, though my only guess was H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Mm. Pretty sure he only time travels a couple of times and not in this pattern. That, yes. Uh, um, <laughs> spoiler, but yeah, that is not That's, the way yeah. that the, the Time Machine uh, travels. I just wrote some crazy medieval and then the cat in the hat comes back. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, uh, Liam, you have uh, none correct, what? I'm sorry to say. Nick and Jordan, you both have one correct. What? Yes! Uh, the, the one guess you made, that is in fact a depiction of Outlander, <laughs> and your guess for a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's <laughs> Court is correct. But let's okay. take a look at those other ones and see what we got. Uh, Outlander. Uh, Time Quake, is this one? Oh, Prince of Purge, of course. I didn't even think of video, video games. games. Hey, we oh just said they were goodness. movies. We never said they were books. books. Um, 
Uh, the original video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> back, but back in my day, my, our video games were printed on paper, <laughs> and we never wanted to read them. Uh, Kindred, Connecticut Yankee, King Arthur's Court, and Prince of Persia at the end there. Um, Look, I don't secretly love and read Outlander all the time. Okay. No one thought you did until you said it, though. <laughs> Shh, I'm thinking about Outland. <laughs> And that's it for this preview of Um Actually. If you liked it, there's a whole lot more waiting for you on Dropout. Go to dropout.tv to start your free trial today. I'm Mike Trapp, reminding you to get your pets spayed and neutered, and to get your zombie pets obliterated. Zombie pets. They're not the pets you loved anymore. They're gone. They're gone. Kill them. Kill them. One of these Dungeons & Dragons adventure modules is fake. The rest are all real. <laughs>